If you look up at the sky on a clear night, you see stars shining. But why do they shine? How far away are they? How long have they been there? And how are they arranged in the universe? Stars are huge balls of material much hotter than the hottest fire on Earth, hot enough to fuse lighter elements into heavier ones. The sun is the closest star to us, and all of the planets in our solar system orbit around it. It's the only star in the sky that looks like anything other than a dot to our eyes. The sun is 93 million miles from Earth. That sounds far, but it's nothing compared with the distance to the next nearest bright star, Alpha Centauri, about four light years from Earth. A light year is the distance that light, the fastest thing known to us, can go in a year, which is about six trillion miles. Keep that in mind when we talk about light years later on. So now we know that Alpha Centauri is four light years away. How big is it? It's only up the radius of the sun, and the sun is a pretty average star at half a million miles across. Many stars are actually much larger than the sun. But even so, those stars are so far away that we can't see any details with our own eyes. Even the biggest telescopes can only get fuzzy pictures of the surfaces of these nearest stars. What most people know about stars in the night sky is that they make fun patterns called constellations. Let's take a look at a familiar group of stars in the Northern Hemisphere. Many Americans call the grouping the Big Dipper, but it has other great names around the world. The stars in the Big Dipper are part of the constellation Ursa Major. On the two-dimensional sky we see, the stars in the Dipper look pretty close together. But if we could travel to the Dipper stars, it would take almost twice as long to get to the farthest one as to the nearest. If our skies were not polluted with light made by humans, about 6,000 stars would be visible with the naked eye. Those are the stars near enough to us to see as separate individual dots, the ones that make up the points of the constellations. But there are actually more than 200 billion stars in just our very own galaxy, the Milky Way. The light from all these stars blends together into the milky band you see running across the sky on dark nights. The Milky Strip is actually a disk of stars seen from our vantage point inside it. It's much easier to understand this geometry if we look at a similar galaxy outside our own. The Andromeda Galaxy, also known as M31, is the closest spiral galaxy to us, only two and a half million light years away. Images like this one, made at infrared wavelengths, just redder than what our eyes can see, show that M31 has one trillion stars in it, including billions just like our own sun. It has a black hole in its center, as do many galaxies, but that's a whole other story. Scales in astronomy are often hard to grasp. M31 and our own Milky Way are just two of the billions of galaxies that make up the full universe. Relatively nearby galaxies often have great shapes like spirals that are beautiful when seen through a telescope. The universe is nearly 14 billion years old, and many of its galaxies are nearly that old as well. This image was created by pointing the Hubble Space Telescope toward one small region of the sky for one million seconds. In it, there are about 10,000 galaxies. Some of the galaxies, the smudgy looking ones, are seen in the process of forming when the universe was less than a billion years old. The stars that make up a galaxy are rarely as old as the universe. Multiple generations of them will be born, live, and die over the lifetime of a galaxy. Our sun is about four billion years old, as are the planets around it. Let's focus back in on the sun. As a star forms, a disk of material is left over around it, which, over millions of years, bunches up into the planets that ultimately orbit the star. In our solar system, Mercury is the closest planet to the sun. Let's go see it. Next after Mercury comes Venus, then Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. On a typical night, these planets are scattered all over the sky because they are at different points in their orbits around the Sun at any particular time. It would take us too long to move our telescope to each one now. You can do that on your own after the tour. But right now, let's go over to Jupiter. Gravity keeps multiple moons of a planet like Jupiter orbiting it just as gravity keeps planets orbiting the Sun. Galileo figured that out and got in quite a lot of trouble for it. Today, 
400 years after Galileo, we know of more than 100 systems of planets around stars other than the Sun. Given the billions of stars and the galaxies of the universe, there are likely to be billions more planets. If only we could travel faster than the speed of light, we could leave our solar system, go past the nearby stars of our galaxy, leave the Milky Way, and visit the many galaxies beyond. Until then, more and more incredible telescopes, including this worldwide telescope, will continue to let us marvel at the wonders of the universe. <laughs>